Hi, 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 how you? Good. How you been? Good, 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 good. Good to see you. Yes, sir. How's it going? How you been, man? How you been? Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you, man. So I gotta talk to you. I'm, I'm trying to find a restroom here. Where, where's the restroom at? <laughs> you don't know either, huh? Where you want to go to the toilet? Toilet. Yeah. Oh, okay. Long, long ride. Yeah. Is this it? Yes. Yeah. Found it on my own. Yeah. <laughs> I consider myself as a uh, musician who has studied every art form. I'm not saying I mastered every art form, but I have studied every art form that pertains to music. Okay. Can I can I ask you for the people who look at you and listen to your beautiful music? Uh, you started at, to play at very very young. Three. Three years old. Yeah. Tiger Woods starts at four. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and how did it evolve, if I may say? How did you came into uh, jazz music? You started jazz music. How did I come into music? No, music, you, not jazz music. Period. Because when I, when you're three, you play everything you hear. What did you play at that time? Everything I heard, whatever I heard. If I heard Beethoven, I played Beethoven. If I heard yeah. Duke Ellington, I played Duke Ellington. If I heard Art Tatum, I played whatever I heard. Maybe not well, but I played it, okay? And then after? And my mother took me to the masters and I had lessons. And she made me take lessons. My mother made me take lessons. She's the reason I'm a musician, because of my mother. I'm here because of my mother. And when did you start to, be, to, to play professionally? And play? 11. I was an old man. When I first arrived in Chicago, that was around 1956. I came from Chicago from my hometown of Memphis, Tennessee. And then that's when I met the great Ahmed Jamal, who at that time was appearing at a place called the Pershing Lounge. And it was a hotel, the Pershing Hotel in Chicago. And it had a lounge. And Ahmed was appearing there almost nightly, I guess, six, at least six nights a week, with a trio.
style is basically the same, I would say. Uh, he, it, it might, it might have changed slightly. Might have changed slightly, but uh, not much. Not much style-wise. Now his plan has changed. His, his, his playing has gone from, you know, it's, it's, it's gone up, I would say, you know, in quality. But it's, that's hard to say too, because it was great then. So it's really hard to uh, pinpoint anything that's really happened that's different from him. He's been playing with great technique, great uh, imagination, great ideas, uh, and different approaches to songs. You know, where somebody might play a song just natural, plain, or straight, he always puts in other things. He he's, and incorporates different kind of ideas into his music. Different time signatures, uh, different vamps and whatnot. So all of these things are, are somewhat a little bit more innovative than it was back in the old days. Although he did these things back in the old days too. But now he's, he's he switched this thing around so much. So in other, in other words, it's a, a, a modernistic approach to his same style. Jazz is ridiculous, as far as I'm concerned. What we've done is sophisticated, a very unsophisticated word. It's American classical music. In order to play this music, you have to know Art Tatum, you have to know Mendelssohn, you have to know Bach, you have to know Beethoven, you have to know Duke Ellington, you have to know Count Basie. So you have to get a word that better suits this music. It's American classical music.
I think basically all the music, musicians, jazz musicians of yesteryear, uh, all the greats, the Charlie Parkers and uh, John Coltrane, these guys all came out of blues bands. started it off the bat, really. I, uh, my brother bought a saxophone, and I started practicing on it. Neither of us had any lessons at all. But we started uh, just experimenting with it. And then later on, we, we got a little book that showed the fingering. Of course, I was in high school, and I had some idea of uh, music because we were studying musical education. You know, we knew what a whole note was, a half note, we knew what that was, you know, basic music, a great staff, the uh, G clef, you know, the bass clef, we knew those things. But uh, I always oftentimes tell people that I'm, I'm basically completely self-taught as far as, uh, because I never went to, went to any, uh, any conservatory or anything like that. My uh, musical knowledge that I acquired I got at a very young age from, from uh, musicians, very learned musicians, who could write, arrange, and compose, and all that stuff. So when I was about 16 or 17 years old, right when I started, I was getting all of this information, how to write, how to arrange, you know, getting a good sound on the instrument. All of these things came when I was just a child, I was just a kid. So when I became, that's why when I became 23 years old, I was with the tops. At a very young age, I was with the Tops, and then Miles Davis came right after that in 1963. I was with Miles Davis, so I went from just picking up a saxophone to play with the Tops in the world in about over a span of 13 years of just picking up the horn. In 13 years, I had went from just practicing, just a kid practicing the saxophone, to the top people in the world of jazz. You know, so that gives you an idea of how quickly I learned. And, and, I, and it's not so unusual for most of the other players that came up in my era. Everybody learned quick. Lee Morgan, uh, uh, Clifford Brown, people of that status, you know. They, they learn all quickly.
After I left Chicago, that's when I got in with the big guys, you know. I left Chicago, joined Max Roach. Then after that, I went with Lyle Hampton for a brief period.
I came down and sat in with the band one night. I went down to hit a band and I requested to, if I asked if I could sit in, and uh, Joe, John Coltrane was gracious enough to lend me his horn, his mouthpiece, and everything. And he didn't really know me. I hadn't met him once before, and he thought I was a nice guy. And he may have heard me on some records, maybe. But he was gracious enough to hand me his horn and say, okay, come on, yeah, let's play. So then Miles heard me play that night. And uh, I think he was impressed. And then shortly after that, I got a call from somebody saying for me to call him, which I never did because I was a little bit nervous, you know. I didn't feel like I was ready for that. But then he called me in person about a year later. And then that's when I uh, uh, consented to go with the band.
There's no, there's great piano. There's no such thing as great. Everybody has some. Art Tatum has something. Earl Garner has something. Earl Hines has something. I have something. Oscar Peterson has something. The great Phineas Newborn has okay, something. But there's no such thing as greatest. There's okay, no greatest. Right. So you can't say the greatest painter. Van Gogh was a great painter, painter and Picasso, but no greatest. Okay. They all had something. I'm Jim Kamak. totally spontaneous you know it's something that you come up with you might play one thing one night the next night you'll play something else on that same set of harmonic uh, progressions so that's what makes it so great that's what makes it so it's it's it's, it's infinitesimal you know you can't you, it, it, it can't be every time you you might play some somebody might play something one night and somebody will come along, transcribe and duplicate it, and then that same person will come on and play something the next night, you'd have to duplicate that because it's completely different from what he played the other night. Mr. Jamal, for instance. You know, and we all have a certain format that we adhere to, you know. We'll play the melody, as you well know, in jazz. They say, well, we'll play the melody, then we'll play the improvisation in between, and then we'll go out with the melody. That's the basic uh, 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 format of jazz. But see, the, all the in-between stuff is what really counts. You know, what you played tonight, you might play something else tomorrow night. Or if you played the tune on the same night, if you had to repeat and play the one tune on the same night, you wouldn't play it the same way. It would be some notes in there that would be different from the first time you played it. That's what makes, makes jazz so important and, and, so, and so flexible and so great because you never have to listen to the same thing all over and over and over again. There's always something there else to be listened to if you listen closely. So that's it.
This music uh, certainly is one of the only two art forms that started in America, in, in the country I was born. American Indian art and jazz. And both are still pushed, pushed, pushed behind. Only two art forms that develop in America. That's how important this music is. Uh-huh. 
Thank <laughs> you. 